Hi, today I'll be teaching you about business process model and notation, also known as BPMN or BPMN 2.0. BPMN is a flowchart method that models the steps of a planned business process from start to finish. At a high level, BPMN helps stakeholders gain understanding through a visual representation of a specific process. Because diagramming can make complex ideas easier to understand, BPMN helps process participants, analysts, managers, technical developers, and many others to visually represent things like order fulfillment, incident management, purchase processes, and many other essential business sequences. In this tutorial, we'll quickly go over the building blocks of BPMN and spend the rest of our time creating a simple BPMN diagram together. To build my diagram, I'll be using a diagramming software called Lucidchart. Check out the link in the description below if you want to follow along in the product. You can sign up for a free Lucidchart account that includes a BPMN 2.0 shape library. BPMN is made up of certain elements or shapes that comprise its visual language. BPMN has four main groups of shapes. I'll be going into detail on each of these later, but here are the main categories. Flow objects. These include events, activities, and gateways. Connecting objects. These are the lines that show sequence and message flow, as well as associations. Pools and swim lanes. These represent major participants in a process. Artifacts. These bring an additional level of detail to a BPMN diagram. The first kind of flow object is an event. Events are triggers that start, modify, or complete a process. There are three types of events, start, intermediate, and end. Each process in a BPMN diagram must begin with an initiating event called the start event. A start event is designated by a circle with a thin border. Many start events contain an icon in the middle to define the event's trigger. For example, a start event that contains an envelope icon indicates that a message arrives and triggers the start of a process. An intermediate event has a double border made of two circles. End events signify the end of a particular process or path within a process. When you see an end event, you'll know that nothing else needs to be done in the process after that point. End events have a thick border. Intermediate and end events, like starting events, can be further designated by one of several symbols. And remember, your BPMM diagram, no matter what it is, will always have at least one start event and at least one end event. Activities are the next type of flow object, and they are the building blocks of BPMN diagrams. They represent specific tasks performed by a person or system, and they're shown by a rectangle with rounded corners. There are four main types of activities, task, subprocess, transaction, and call. For sake of simplicity, we'll only focus on tasks in this tutorial. A task is a single action that occurs in a business process, like mailing a letter or editing a draft of a news release. They are likely the most common shapes you'll see in a diagram because they represent actions performed by process participants. Remember that activities, like a lot of shapes in BPMN, can be further designated with icons to visually show important attributes, like message send or receive, user tasks, manual tasks, or service tasks, among others. The last type of flow objects are gateways. Gateways are represented by a diamond shape and are decision points that can adjust the process path or flow based on certain conditions or events. Like a pipe may split and divert water in two directions, so are gateways. They create a condition where a choice needs to be made. For example, a gateway can be used to show the separation in a process path where a customer decides between two different shipping options. There are several different types of gateways differentiated with symbols. We won't go more into these right now, but I'll include a link in the description of this video that covers each type in more detail. While gateways call out certain decision points, it should be noted that gateways are not decisions, nor do they make decisions. Rather, they dictate the flow of the process. Connecting objects are the lines present in every BPMN diagram. They show the order of activities to be performed, and there are three types. First is the sequence flow symbol, a solid line with an arrow at the end, which shows the main order of activities to be performed. Next is the message flow symbol, a dotted line that depicts messages that flow across pools. You'll see these lines connecting different tasks between swim lanes. More on that in a moment. Lastly, there's the association symbol, which shows relationships between artifacts and flow objects. We'll cover artifacts in a few moments as well. A pool represents a major participant in a process, like a company or an organization, and swim lanes show the participants within each company or organization. Swim lanes help define who is accountable for each part of the process, so no important steps are missed. Any process that involves one or more contributor will have swim lanes, and if you're modeling, for example, a business-to-business -business collaboration, you can give each company their own pool and further separate participants within each company with their own swim lanes. That type of BPMN diagram is called a collaborative diagram, and it's what we'll be creating together today. Lastly, there are artifacts. These are mostly used to bring an added level of detail to your BPMN diagram. There are three types of artifacts, data, group, and annotation. A data object represents data placed into the process, data resulting from the process, data that needs to be collected, or data that must be stored. 
A group object organizes tasks or processes that have significance to the overall process. For example, you might see a group around a certain set of activities and gateways. While a group may show a logical grouping of activities, it does not affect the flow of the diagram at all. Lastly, an annotation shape provides the modeler opportunities to describe additional flow parts of the BPMN diagram. Think of annotations as comments that can be used to clarify or explain a particularly complex part of a process. Flow objects, connecting objects, pools and swim lanes, and artifacts work together to make up BPMN's language. Now let's create a BPMN diagram together. Again, if you'd like to follow along in Lucidchart, check out the link below to sign up for a free trial. If not, follow along with your diagramming software of choice, or even a pen and paper. To further illustrate the concepts we've covered so far, I'm going to make up an example. We're going to make a basic BPMN diagram showing the process of buying ice cream in an ice cream shop. The first thing I need to do is identify what parties are involved in this process. First, there's the customer, and second, there's the ice cream shop. Since the customer doesn't work at the ice cream shop, and the ice cream shop doesn't employ the customer, they'll each have their own separate pool. This particular ice cream shop has two employees, the person making the ice cream, who we'll call the ice cream artist, and the cashier. These two will be put in the ice cream shop pool, but each have their own lane, as they have their own roles throughout the process. As we build this BPMN diagram, these will help us show quickly who's in charge of what tasks. To start documenting our process for buying ice cream, we'll first use a starting event shape. What is the starting event here? For every customer, in order to get ice cream from the shop, they first have to enter the store. Once a customer is in the store, the first thing they'll need to do to continue the process is to review the menu. This ice cream shop has lots of flavors, and the customer wants to be sure they see something they like before they order. Review menu will be the first task in our BPMN diagram. We'll also connect the starting event to this first activity, with the arrow pointing in the direction the process is going. This shows that first the customer enters the store, and then reviews the menu options. After reviewing the menu options, the customer can react in one of two ways. They'll either see something they want to order, or they won't want to order anything. Because we have two options after this first task, we'll need a gateway. Remember, gateways are diamond-shaped and help guide the flow of the process. We'll include an X in the gateway to show that these two options are mutually exclusive. This is called an exclusive gateway. So we'll draw two arrows and label one wants to order ice cream, and the other doesn't want to order ice cream. If a customer doesn't want to order after reviewing the menu, they'll simply leave the store, and since nothing else happens after that, we'll make that an end event for this path in the process. After we label this leaves the store, there's nothing else we need to do for the path. For the other path, if the customer is excited about a particular ice cream flavor and wants to order, the next thing they'll do is order ice cream. We'll make orders ice cream our next task in this separate path. A couple of things to note regarding this task. First, because ordering ice cream involves communication with the ice cream artist, we'll put a black envelope icon in the top left of the task, indicating this is a send task, or one that involves sending a message to another process participant. Second, we need to consider what comes next in the process for both the customer and the ice cream artist. If you're the customer, after you've ordered ice cream, you need to wait for your ice cream to be made. This is our first intermediate event in the process, and we'll label it wait for ice cream to be made. We can also include a timer symbol to visually indicate that time is passing here for the customer. After that, the customer doesn't do anything until they receive their ice cream. And since that is so significant to the process, we'll consider it an intermediate event as well. If you're the ice cream artist, the first thing you're responsible for is to receive the order. This is the ice cream artist's starting event, and it is connected to the send task orders ice cream via a message flow symbol. We'll also put a white envelope icon in it to indicate that the message that was sent by the customer is received here. After the order has been received, the first task they need to perform is to check and make sure the ingredients for the order are available. The ice cream artist can't fulfill an order request without the necessary ingredients. At this ice cream shop, all the ice cream flavors are in tubs, so the ice cream artist can easily see what flavors are available. For the sake of this example, we'll call the tubs of ice cream our ice cream data, which we'll represent with a data shape. To fulfill the task Check Ingredients, there needs to be an input of ice cream data. We can connect the data shape to the Check Ingredients task to show that at this point in the process, data must be input to move forward. We can also include an arrow icon with our data icon to show that this is data being input for this task. After checking for available ingredients, one of two things can happen. Either the ingredients are available, or there are not enough ingredients to fulfill the order. Because these options are mutually exclusive, we need another exclusive gateway to show the split in the flow of the process. 
we'll label the two arrows after this gateway to show the options. If ingredients are available to fulfill the order, the ice cream artist can make the ice cream. Since making the ice cream is performed physically by a person, we'll put a hand icon in our task to reflect that. This is a manual task. After making the ice cream, the ice cream artist then gives the ice cream to the customer, which is another manual task. But if there are not enough ingredients to fulfill the customer's order, the ice cream artist needs to perform the task informs the customer. Then the customer will need to review the menu to see if there's anything else they want. And since that is already a step in our process, we can connect it back to the first task for the customer. Then the customer can decide if they want to order or not, and the process will continue as we've documented it so far. When we go back to the task gives ice cream, we'll use another message flow symbol to return to the customer pool and connect it to the intermediate event receives ice cream. Now that the customer has the ice cream in their hand, the next thing they need to do is pay for it. For sake of simplicity, we'll say that this ice cream shop only accepts credit cards. To pay, the customer will need to give their credit card to the cashier, which will begin the process for them. Just like when the customer gave their order to the ice cream artist, we'll include an intermediate event here after gives credit card to show that the customer waits while the cashier performs their tasks. The starting event for the cashier in this example will be credit card received. From there, they'll perform a few tasks to process the transaction. First, they'll confirm the order, and then the cashier will run the credit card through the machine, and finally, will return the credit card and receipt to the customer. Since these three tasks are all part of the transaction process, I'm going to use an artifact to show that they go together. The artifact I'm using here is called a group, and I'll put it around the three cashier tasks and label it transaction process. Once the cashier has performed these tasks, the process for the ice cream shop ends, so we'll put an end event here and label it transaction complete. When the cashier gives the credit card and receipt to the customer, the customer then needs to receive their credit card and receipt. We'll also make this an intermediate event. After the customer has their ice cream, method of payment, and receipt in hand, they're now ready to eat their ice cream. The process ends when the customer finishes eating and leaves the store. Eats ice cream will be our customer's final task, and since it's a manual task, we'll label it with the appropriate icon. Leaves the store will be the end event for our process for the customer. BPMN is a great way to communicate complex processes to stakeholders in all departments. The example we made is fairly simple, but BPMN diagrams can get even more complex. Thanks for watching this tutorial on BPMN 2.0. Please subscribe to our channel to see more helpful tutorials. And don't hesitate to click on the link and sign up for a Lucidchart account and start making your own BPMN diagrams today.